So, uh, I just started over the camera again because I ran out of camera juice. And I wanted to talk about page 184. Human beings come in more models than XX or XY. There's a variation in gender, even at the most basic genetic level. And once you start considering anatomical anomalies, hormonal balances and imbalances, self-image, images and desire, you get a host of possibilities. And she's right. I mean, there's really no way of, when you look at, look at things in that way, you, you know that it's so. Um, she, and she says, page 189, a friend of mine who works as a sex surrogate says he now recommends that his transsexual clients avoid surgically altering their bodies until they've tried to be happy cross-dressing and finding partners who will accept them as transsexuals. He feels uncomfortable about the side effects of the artificial hormones, the poor results of surgery and, uh, to alter the genitals, and the fact that so many of the changes are irreversible. And I totally agree with this I this is one thing I really want to look at these are books the like I would recommend if you're gonna start reading Pat Calippia I'd recommend this one first um, and then the sap sapestry or whatever and and then proceed with caution um, but uh, this is one thing that I really want to read what I have never read what Pat Califia wrote post-surgery and I am interested Patrick Califia Patrick. Uh, yeah. so um, because I worry about this for people I, I care about people very much and I think how why would people dislike their own bodies they should be comfortable in their own bodies they should feel just appreciative of what they have and um, all that right so well, it makes me feel bad when people don't it. and yeah and then um i think well if a person goes and cuts themselves like i worry about i wanted to have children and at least one child and i was talking about james talking to james today about how i did not want to have an episiotomy and i did not want to tear so I would have worked on trying to prepare myself for the experience of childbirth naturally so that I could, my body could recover properly um, because bodies are, are meant to be able to handle such things. And so I, I believe it could have. Uh, so anyway, and I don't believe episiotomies are natural or a good idea because you're cutting a, through a lot of healthy sensitive tissue well you say nerves get cut off right? yeah so, and those i don't think regenerate. So no saying, so, yeah, so i you know i had always i had enjoyed sex before and i wanted to enjoy it after childbirth so i definitely didn't want to lose any nerve endings or anything like that and um so that's just an episiotomy now the sexual reassignment surgery that's a lot more serious so there's got to be a lot of nerves getting cut and i don't i haven't read about like i like reading pat calipia stuff i hadn't read it since i was a teenager and then i got back into this for this little bit here but i enjoy reading her stuff just because it's an honest she writes honestly and even though it may not be I don't know if all of it is what I would consider true. Um, I do believe that it is what she considers to be the truth. So this is her truth. And um, I appreciate that immensely. So I think that if somebody is going to talk about whether, yep, no feeling down there, um, she would, or he now right so i really would like to read about that and it's something that i'm very concerned about i would like i i want to see more people comfortable with having sex enjoying sex and um and enjoying being themselves feeling comfortable about existing in their own skin and so i'm i'm not a fan of i i'm actually 
it's not something I would ever consider um, changing. I'm very happy being in a in the body that I am in, and um, and maybe I'm a bit shy about things like I was talking about James, even though I've I've um, experienced more things than he has. Um, he is way more. Um, personally experienced. I mean, you're more a willing and able to do things than I am in many respects. Well, maybe more relaxed than and, some things. Yeah. Like I'm pretty shy and really quite prudish, honestly. And yeah. and I don't mean to be. Yeah. I guess it's just the way. But I, I'm not driven to certain things. You know, there's a different sort of yeah. thing. Like, I'm relaxed about certain things. I'm not driven to certain things. So I'm not going to drive you to certain things that you don't like. You know? Well... I'm being submissive by nurture. I I live to please. So um, anyway, you don't have to feel embarrassed about anything or anything like that because I I love you the way you are and I love everything about you. So there's nothing that would ever even my little ears even his even little ears. So I keep telling her when I hit ninety, you're gonna love these ears because you're gonna. Be the right size. So I I wish that everybody felt that way that they just they the partner that they with and and I also feel like I don't I don't like the casual sex attitude. I I can't agree with that because I know that mine and James's relationship we've been together 15 and a half years you said coming up 16 yeah not too long. So in the fall yeah. Um, so November the eighth. Yeah. Sure. So um, our relationship, uh, our sexual relationship, is way better now than it has ever been, and in a year from now, it's going to be way better then than it is now. Maybe even off the charts. Yeah. Off the charts. Yeah. So, um, casual sex is stupid. It's well, stupid. It's, it's a waste of time. It's a it's waste just, of time. The way I compare it to is, uh, I use hockey metaphors, and they don't mean much to Pauline, but it's like you'll watch an all-star game, and they'll be the best uh, teams from the East and the West. And uh, so you'll get guys playing together that have never played together before, and you'll see they're hugely excited. It's like a, a first date, you know, like they're, they're just like pumped and all that sort of stuff. And then you realize that everything's going wrong. You know, they'll throw a pass to someone and the other the person's gone the opposite direction. You're going, yeah, yeah. You know, it's it's a similar sort of thing. And it'll go on the whole game, you know. There'll be some things that they'll pick up a little bit, but there you go. It'll be like uh, uh, two and a half hours in real time and nothing really of mind-blowing has happened at all. You know, and these are the greatest players in the world, right? So uh, it's a similar sort of thing. So one night stands, yeah, who cares? Yeah, and so, I mean, anyway, and uh, so there's, I'm certainly a very different person from <coughs> you, but um, what else does she talk about in there? Oh, monogamy. She was saying that monogamy is just, um, oh, I think I wrote some of it down. Um, she was saying that it's, Anyway, she was saying, oh, that it was, um, control of the other person, based on control of the other person or something like that, or that was its purpose, and it's like, or of the other partner, and, um, and we don't agree. Yeah, I don't think she understands. We so don't think she understands monogamy yeah. at all. Yeah. And that's okay. It should that's just fine. Shouldn't be generalizing. No. Thing her own uh, she should be asking other people what it's like yeah so um she says it's not self-control it's control of the other person and uh that's just another form of dominance or something like that it's 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 and it's not even like self-control it's just uh i don't know i yeah anyway it's not going to work if it's just based on the person stealing themselves and exercising what they see as self-control. Okay. 
Okay, well, I think that's all I wanted to talk about. So, that's my big talk about these books. What's uh, next month? What is the month of the what? Dog training. <laughs> month of dog. <laughs> I don't think. Oh man. I don't think I, they really go together. I, I, no, no. Our chihuahuas are going to be so bummed though. Yeah. A whole month of dog training. Mm-hmm. <laughs>